Look, 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 and let's add a custom fluid to Minecraft. Alright, we find ourselves back in the treasure once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom fluid to Minecraft here, of course, with Forge 191 and with the new and improved fluid API. So just to be sure to get this out of the way, this should not be compatible with any 118 mod, only 119, because if I recall correctly, the Fluid API was introduced in 119. So let's just take a look what it entails. It is actually freaking awesome. The first thing we need in our tutorial mod package, we're going to right click new package called Fluid. And inside of there, we're going to need three different classes. The first one is the mod fluids class. The second one is going to be the mod fluid types class. And last but not least, we're going to make a base fluid type class that's just going to help us to, well, basically deal with our custom fluid types. Let's start with our base fluid type class over here. This is going to extend the fluid type class over here. We won't hover over this because we're going to add everything manually. Now, I want to say that some of the implementation taken here was from Chonster over here with a test mod where they basically added the support for flowing as well as still textures. And I added some more stuff, including things like the overlay texture, the tint color, as well as the fog color as well. Let's start by copying over the five different fields over here. Once again, of course, everything here is going to be available to you in the description below. Get our parts for your individual gist as well. So this is going to be the five different fields, the resource location for the still, the flowing, the overlay, as well as tin color and the fog color. Let's also copy over the constructor. This shouldn't be anything too crazy. Pretty much just getting all of the fields here via the parameters and then passing them in inside of the constructor. For completion's sake, we'll also add getters to all of the different fields. Also, nothing that should be crazy. We're just returning each of the different fields. And then we'll also override the initialize client method, this one right here. And we're just going to do it like this. Now, inside of it, what we need to do is we need to say, instead of calling the super, we want to say consumer.accept. And then we want to make a new iClient fluid type extension, exactly this one that's already being suggested. So just tab to autocomplete. And we can see that we should override a method, get tin color method. That's going to be fine. We're going to override plenty of methods in here anyway. So what we're going to do is we're just going to delete this and I'm going to once again copy over method by method. The first one is just the get still texture method, which just returns the still texture. Shouldn't be too anything too crazy. Now we're going to continue with the get flowing texture method. And I think you're going to see a rough approximation of what we're going to do, right? Next thing is going to be the overlay texture and then the tint color. And then we're also going to have the modify fog color. Very important. This is not the get fog color, but the modify fog color method that we have to override here in returning the fog color. And then last but not least, we're also going to override the other modify fog color method because that's actually a second method, as you can see. And then inside of here, let's just format this a little bit differently. We don't want to call the super. What we actually want to call is render system set shader fog start, you know, one, for example, and then six. So what do those numbers mean? Those are pretty much the own, the first numbers that you can basically change here. The numbers here represent when the fog starts and when the fog sort of ends. So basically the distance where the fog starts and where you cannot see anymore. That's the general idea. I highly recommend playing around with those numbers if you want to modify the fog. This is the fog when you're inside of this particular fluid. How far can you see out? So keep that in mind. Once again, play around with those numbers. Highly, highly recommend. Right, but that is actually all of the class that we need right here. Next thing, we can move on to the mod fluid types over here. And for this, we're going to need three resource locations. I will copy them over just because it's a little bit easier, but they are nothing too crazy. We basically have a water still and a water flow resource location over here. So those just point to the water resource location for still and flowing water. Now, those are gray, and we're going to color those in with the tint color that we've basically made right here. We're going to do that in just a moment. And I also have a soap overlay over here. I'm presently not 100% sure where this is used, but I've created a custom texture for this. And this is basically under miscellaneous in the soap water. So we'll just take a look at that in a moment and then we'll see. Furthermore, we need a public static final deferred register of type fluid type. So this one right here, and this is going to be called fluid underscore types equal to deferred register dot create. Let's break this up. There you go. And this is going to be forge registries that keys that fluid types. And then we'll just add tutorial mod that mod ID. And of course, where there is a deferred register, there also is a public static void register method with an I event bus called event bus as a parameter. And then we're going to say fluid type does register and then passing in the event bus. We'll immediately call this because why not? So let's just say mod fluid types dot register passing in the mod event bus over here. 
And then we'll have to do the same thing for the mud fluids class as well, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's make a helper method over here. So this is going to be a private static registry object of type fluid type called register as well. And we're going to pass in a string parameter name and a fluid type dot properties called properties. Now this is going to return fluid types dot register, passing in the name and then a new supplier of, and this is very important, a new base fluid type, so our custom one. And then we just basically pass in all of the different things that we need. The first one is the water still resource location. Then we have the water flowing resource location. We then have the soap overlay resource location. We then have the tint color. Now I've already prepared this. This is going to be A1E038D0. So this is basically sort of a pinkish color that's going to be that the water is tinted in, you can change this, right? If you just do 0x, that's going to be a hexadecimal number, and it's going to convert this into ARBG. So the first two numbers over here, right, the first two letters, basically, are going to be the alpha value, and then we have RGB, so basically red, green, and blue color. So you can use any color picker and basically use that. Then we're going to make a new vector 3F. This is going to be the color that is used for the fog itself. Now, this is very important that you get this right. Uh, you actually don't put these numbers in here, right? You could, so you could, of course, just this color and then put the RBG values in here. What we actually want to do is take the RBG value and divide it by 255 over here. So that's very important. So keep this in mind. This is going to be divided by 255 and then 208 divided by 255. Let's add an F here as well, just so that we have it. And then after the vector three, we also want to pass in the properties and then close this with a semicolon and no more errors should be present. Once again, of course, the code is available to you in the description below so you can basically compare with your own stuff. So once again, the vector over here that we're using basically uses from zero to one for their RGB values instead of going from zero to 255. This is why we have to divide by 255 to get the relative values from zero to one. Keep that in mind and then you should be fine. Right, and then we can finally register our fluid type. So this is going to be a public static final registry object, of course, of type fluid type. And that's going to be the soap underscore water underscore fluid underscore type. And it's going to be equal to reg the register method, passing in soap underscore water underscore fluid as a string. And then we're going to have fluid type dot properties dot create. Then we can choose some, well, different things. So you can see we can basically add some, well, different Things to this particular fluid type, there's different path types, can convert to source, can extinguish, hydrate. I highly recommend when you are using this, just try out a bunch of stuff over here, supports boating, right, temperatures, viscosity, all of this craziness. You can basically set and play around with. We're just going to do a few things. So we're just going to, for example, going to set the light level to 2, we're going to set the density to 15, viscosity, we're just going to set to 5, we're going to make a sound. That's going to be the sound action of get drink. So when you drink this, the sound event that's going to be played is going to be sound events dot honey drink. There you go. And then we'll just end this with a semicolon. And there we go. The particular registry object here, the fluid type is registered. Beautiful. And that actually concludes this class as well. We can then proceed to the mod fluids class, which is going to be a little more complicated. But also, don't worry about it. We're going to go through this totally fine. So first of all here, we also need a public static final deferred register of type fluid this time from Minecraft world level material. And this is going to be called fluids. This is of course equal to a deferred register dot create this time forge registries dot fluids. And of course, passing in tutorial mod dot mod ID. And then last but not least, and then of course, as always, public static void register method with an I event bus called event bus. And we're just going to say fluids dot register passing in the event bus and then immediately calling this. Now just making sure I personally called it beforehand. I don't think it makes that much of a difference, but just to keep sure, all the fluids register method before the fluid types, right? Whatever the case may be, now we can add the two fluids because we need two fluids, a flowing fluid and a, well, basically a source fluid. The first one is going to be a public static final registry object of type flowing fluid. Very important that both of them are actually flowing fluids. This is going to be the source underscore soap underscore water equal to fluids dot register. And then we're going to name is going to be soap underscore water underscore fluid. As a second parameter, we're going to have a supplier and then very important, a new forge flowing fluid of type source over here for so we're going to say forge flowing fluid dot source incredibly important that this is done correctly. 
This has to be the source, and the other one has to be the flowing. We're going to see that in a moment, and we can basically keep it like this. The second one is going to be a public static final registry object, also of type flowing fluid. This is going to be our flowing soap water, equal to fluids.register, and we're going to call this the flowing underscore soap underscore water. As a second parameter, once again, a supplier over here. This time of forge flowing fluid that flowing incredibly important that the first one is the source and the second one is flowing. Please keep this in mind and make sure that this is done correctly. I've seen this in the old fluid API that sometimes people get this confused and they have both of them a source. The first one has to be the source. The second one has to be the flowing. Keep that in mind. Now, how do we get rid of those errors? We have to make a forge flowing fluid properties. So we're going to make this in the same class over here. So we're just going to say a public static final forge flowing fluid dot properties. And we're going to call this the soap water fluid properties. And that's going to be equal to a new forge flowing fluid properties. And those are going to have some crazy things. The first thing we're going to need is the mod fluid type that we've made. So mod fluid types dot soap water fluid type. That's great. Then we need the source. So we're just going to pass in the source itself. Then we're going to pass in the flowing and then we're going to close the first parentheses. And then here we can call some different things. For example, the tick rate, the slope find distance, level decrease, as well as the explosion distance. We also have to supply a block as well as a bucket. We're going to do that as well. We're going to say a slope find distance of two and a level decrease per block is going to be two as well. Now, this is something I'm not 100% sure about what the, um, what the level decrease is. I believe if I recall correctly, so the level decrease here is basically just how long this particular fluid is going to flow for until it basically stops and is no longer something with one being the longest and then two and, and so on and so forth being less so because it basically it decreases faster per block. That is the general idea. Uh, but once again, highly recommended to just try out a bunch of stuff. We're also going to call the block and the bucket methods over here as well. Now, we can't fill those with anything just yet because, well, we neither have the block nor the bucket. What we can do, what we can say in the registry object is mod fluids dot soap water fluid properties. And then we're just going to say the same thing for the flowing one as well. Now we just need a block and a bucket. So let's go into the model blocks class and let's create the block over here. So the block is not actually going to be that crazy. All things considered, we're just going to have a public static final registry object of type block. And this is going to be the soap underscore water underscore block equal to blocks that register. Very important that we don't use the register block method because we don't actually want an item associated with this. And then this is going to be the soap water underscore block. There you go. As a second parameter, of course, as always, a new liquid block this time, liquid block right here. The first parameter being the mod fluids that source soap water. Very important that we pass in the source. Then we want block behavior dot properties dot copy. And then we're just going to copy blocks dot water. And that should be pretty much it. If you have anything else that you want to add, you can add a no collision strength of 100 and no loot table. However, this should already be done by the block water properties over here. So that should be pretty much everything that we need. And then in the block, we can say mod blocks dot soap water block without adding anything to it. This should work. Now, of course, what we need to do if you have an error over here, we actually want this to be a registry object of a liquid block so that it actually knows, okay, this is a liquid block and then the error here should go away. Now we can add a bucket. Now, the bucket item is going to be, of course, in the mod items class. And once again, nothing too crazy over here. Let's actually just duplicate the blueberry. And this is going to be the soap underscore water underscore bucket over here. And then same with the name soap underscore water underscore bucket. And this is, of course, can you guess? Well, a new bucket item. Very good. Now, this is not going to have any food. So we can just delete the food over here. But what it is going to have as its first parameter is going to be the mod fluids that once again the source very very important that you pass in the source over here we also want this to be able to only stack to one that is also quite important and then if i do recall correctly there is a craft remainder and here we want to say items dot bucket just making sure that the craft remainder here is a bucket now this might actually already be done in the bucket over here but just to be absolutely sure we can add this as well and that should be pretty much be fine then we could say mod items dot soap water bucket. And there we go. And now all of these things have been added. Now there's two more things that we need to do. Number one, of course, adding the adding something to the client event over here. So the FML client setup event, set the render layer for both of the fluids. So they're actually translucent. So you can look through them. I'll just copy this over because it's not that complicated. And you can take a look at this in the 
there's going to be source soap water here and then flowing soap water. So you can see we're just sending the render type to translucent, pulling item block render types, set render layer, passing in the fluid once the source and one time the flowing, and then that should be it. Sending it to translucent, setting it to translucent, and then this is going to make it so that we can actually see through the actual fluid block. And now let's go on to the JSON file. So of course, we're going to need a translation here for the soap water bucket, nothing too crazy. And then we also need a model for this. It's gonna be the soap water bucket adjacent file, nothing crazy going on over here, just pointing to a normal texture, which is in the item folder. So nothing insane when you really think about it. Now what we also need is the miscellaneous over here so that we're gonna add a miscellaneous folder with the in soap water texture. Like I said, this is gonna be the texture. I am once again, not 100% sure where this is being displayed. I just added it just in case. And those should be all of the things that we need to add in order to have our own custom fluid added to Minecraft. So I would say, let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, finds us in Minecraft and let's see, there we go. The soap water bucket has been added. And if I just dig a little all here let's set it down and there we go our custom fluid is in there and what it should do as well if i go into it it should push me so it does push me so the water physics work that's really cool and we can actually see this is how it would look like if i you know sort of have the camera under it and if i actually go inside of it then we're going to see that there is also a fog effect that happens as you can see you know a couple of blocks away which is really freaking awesome so if you are submerged in this right and it's actually and you look like far far away then you can't actually see what's going on which is really really awesome so i i really like this this is working very very well we can even see if i just get a normal bucket here as well Going to survival mode, I can even pick it up. And once again, right, I can just move it around and do all sorts of crazy things with it. I really like this. And I gotta be honest, the new fluid API is pretty awesome. We can have some crazy custom fluids and they are all working really well. And I absolutely love it. So that's how easy it can be to add a custom fluid to Minecraft. Right, and that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So yeah.